with a with a look back over the last uh, 20 years, really since the Sun City agreements and the evolution of of um, a much more peaceful transition in the DRC. Um, we are waiting for Deputy Chief of Staff Wameso to join us. And so I would like to ask um, Chief of Staff Kamitatu and Ambassador Kapanga to answer um, the first series of questions. We've set aside about 20 minutes for this. But as we look at transforming the vast natural resources of the DRC, it's, it's minerals, but also it's forests, it's oil, petroleum, it's hydro energy. From the proverbial view that of it as a scandal or a curse to being a blessing for governance and peace, I'd like to ask the panelists to, to think of the last 20 years and what are some improvements in natural resource governance that have occurred and how have they improved security for citizens and DRC society? Linked with that, and perhaps in the same response, um, Olivier and, and Andre, if you could also be honest about the challenges that remain in terms of governance and how is that undermining security for the Congo citizens and society? So uh, with that, if I could ask um, uh, Olivier to respond first, followed by Andre. Thank you, Richard. I, I don't know if I can talk in, in French because I'm much more fluent in French or but uh, in English, I will try to do my best. I'm not so fluent, but uh, in fact, je ne sais pas, est-ce qu'on peut parler un peu en français ou c'est exclusif? Uh, I don't think so. We don't have translation this morning, sorry. <laughs> so, unfortunately, <laughs> you will have to accommodate with my English. Uh, well, during the 20 last years, I think we, 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 we improve a lot in terms of uh, management of the natural resources in, uh, in DRC. Uh, for sure, it's not perfect and we are far from uh, the objectives, but uh, we did a lot and uh, we try, first of all, in the early 2000s uh, to be close to, to the World Bank in order to adopt the, the mining code. It was a real revolution after more than five years <coughs> of war, civil war. So it was very important to, uh, to, to try to give the best uh, in terms of management to the natural resources. So in 2002, we adopted the mining code in order to, uh, to, 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 to be in line with uh, the World Bank and the donors. At that period, uh, don't forget that the, the budget of the DRC was $300 million per year. When Joseph Kabila took power in 2001, the budget of the, of the DRC was $300 a million dollar per year. Today, it's four billion. Uh, so, uh, first of all, it was the first result. The second reform, very important, it was to adhere to the EITI in terms to give more transparency to the mining sector and to the natural resources, not only the mining sector, but the uh, hydrocarbure and also the forestry. So it was I think a second very good initiative. And uh, finally, when uh, the obligation to publish the contracts in terms of mining, in terms of mineral resources, in terms of natural resources, I think it changed totally, uh, I think the perception of uh, uh, the, the country. So let's say that during the 20 last years, we gain a lot. For sure, it's not perfect, and we have also to improve a lot in terms of management. But uh, with the mining code in uh, the second mining code in 2018, I, will, I think we took the benefit of uh, <coughs> the first mining code. And uh, the appropriation of the second mining code, because it was uh, elaborated with the support of the government for sure, the civil society, it was very important, and the companies, the mining companies, it was very important to get the second one uh, in line also with the concern of the country. 
today the mining sector represents uh let's say uh nearly between 35 and 40 percent of the budget uh and now we are going to produce we are coming from uh 500,000 tons of copper and we will reach 2 million tons of copper in the two next years so uh we can gain a lot but in terms of the result of the 20 last years we improve in terms of management in the natural resources thank you very much um Am ambassador kapanga andre would you like to uh, add a perspective You've been in government, but you've also been representing and working with a mining company to, to share the, the, the success, the accomplishments over those last 20 years, but also the challenges that now remain. Uh, Richard, I would say that uh, before uh, the year 2001, uh, it was extremely difficult to know whether the Congo had any policy as far as the mining sector was concerned. But with uh, the arrival of President Kabila in 2001, then we had the mining code, which uh, 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 Olivier just mentioned. Uh, the, the mining code was adopted in 2002. And with the adoption of the mining code, you had many investors who came to the DRC and invested in the mining sector, especially the copper and cobalt sectors and gold, I'm sorry. And so you have, uh, you had the arrival of uh, big companies such as uh, Tenke Fungurumi Mining, uh, Glencore, Kibali Gold, etc. So those companies tremendously contributed to the budget of the DRC as Olivier mentioned it, and um, the country saw a certain uh, improvement uh, even in the social sector, and that improvement benefited the population in terms of the creation of jobs. And if you take, for example, Tenke Fungurume Mining, uh, we created uh, approximately 10,000 jobs, and those are direct jobs. So if you look at the indirect jobs, you, you'll see that for each direct job, you have approximately one to 10 indirect jobs that is created in, in the country. That is in the area uh, where Tenke Fungurume is operating. So the same can be said for Kibali, the same can be said for KCC, the same can be said for Mumi, et cetera. So there is an improvement in the budget, of the country, there is also an improvement as far as uh, the creation of employment is concerned. But that comes with some challenges. So when you have big companies that settle in certain areas, you have serious challenges. That is, you have an overflow of people and uh, will go into the, the areas where the, those mining companies have settled. And so you, you, you have security issues that come and then the government is uh, uh, in, in uh, the, the government comes in front of certain challenges, especially uh, with regard to the illegal miners. But uh, with the, the improvement of the mining sector, you also have uh, the fact that there is the EITI that came in that is trying to control, to, to, to kind of control uh, what comes in and how it is spent. And that has led to many uh, NGOs and the media to try to see how the money that is brought in is managed by the government. So there is an improvement. So um, I can say that since 2001, there has been tremendous improvement, but there are also many challenges that the country is still facing uh, up to now. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I'd like to invite uh, Marie Chantal to add, um, again, this from a 20 year perspective, what has been the progress <coughs> and what are the remaining obstacles to, um, 
to improve governance and related uh, peace and security for the Congo citizens. Uh, thank you, uh, Richard, and um, thank you for having me uh, here. Um, I think that um, whether it's um, André or Olivier, they have mentioned the most important uh, uh, points. But I think that what remains a key challenge is uh, we have not mentioned it, but it's um, all what relates to, uh, I would say, good governance in general, but I would specifically mention corruption. Corruption has been quite a, a, a difficult issue for companies operating uh, in the country. Um, especially when you talk about um, engagement with um, uh, with public um, um, authorities. Um, so, um, I think that is really uh, critical and uh, and key. Um, and it's uh, it's a point that has um, is being, of course, uh, the government is trying to address it, but I still think that there's a lot, a lot to be done. The mining companies are the biggest contributors to the budget of the government of the DRC. And what has been very significant is the fact that all these biggest mining companies, when they pay their taxes, they pay the taxes to the state treasury. So, and they do it in a very transparent manner and uh, many of these companies do publish their results and you have EITI that follows very closely what mining companies pay to uh, uh, the, the state. And so uh, in that respect, we can say that there is an improvement in trying to control, in trying to control uh, corruption in uh, in the DRC. So with uh, EITI, uh, the results or the contributions are published also uh, publicly. Uh, and so you have the media that is aware of what is going on as far as the contributions of uh, the, mining, the, the mining sector is concerned. And you also have, uh, uh, for example, uh, some NGOs that try to follow the trail of the money and how it is spent. And with the advent of President Chisekedi, we also have the EGF, Inspector General de Finances, as uh, Olivier was saying it, who is trying to play a major role in trying to follow or to see how the money is managed, the, the state money uh, is managed by the various political actors. So there is uh, an improvement in the fact that money is being paid to the national treasury and it's very difficult for individuals to uh, receive money, the taxes paid by these money companies to the state. Uh, excuse me, I, I just want to, uh, to correct something. Uh, the, the mining sector, the, mining sec the contribution of the mining sector to the budget of the state is very low. It's not uh, uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, ambassador say, because uh, you know many of them receive from the, 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 the state tax exemption for many many years. It's it's normal. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not uh, against uh, this situation, uh, and uh, but what I think that. Uh, uh, we, 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 we talk about the, the, what uh, a DRC can do uh, to, uh, to improve uh, uh, the, the situation of the mining sector. But I think that uh, there is also a responsibility of uh, uh, you know, mining company. And I think that's uh, 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 on top of uh, uh, that, the, 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 the global uh, of financial sector. Because uh, the, 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 the money made by the mining sector is more and more important, you know, with uh, uh, the, the, the level of, uh, of the price of uh, 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 copper, cobalt, uh, uh, and so on. And uh, 
the level of the production uh, of uh, this company in our country. But unfortunately, the, 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 the money, the important money that they, they, they made, that uh, they make in our country, do not uh, benefit, uh, do not, uh, do not benefit uh, to the, the, the Congolese population. The, 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 the wealthy of the mining sector is kept by uh, London Stock Exchange, uh, uh, you know, Wall Street, uh, and uh, every day by uh, uh, a financial mechanism uh, that uh, 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 where the, the, our country is totally out. And it's uh, something we need also to fix uh, with not only uh, the, 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 uh, the, the mining company, but also with uh, all the global financial sector. It's uh, what I can uh, I, I can add, and uh, I, I just want to uh, to uh, to say something about the, the contribution of the mining sector in uh, our economy. And I think, uh, if I may add something, Richard, please go ahead. Yeah, at its best period, and uh, Mr. Yuma Albert Yuma told this at its best period, the Jekka mine was producing 500,000 tons of copper. And Jekamine contributed to 70%, 70, 70 percent of the budget. Now, with more than 1 million tons of copper, the mining sector contributed to 17% of the budget. That just due with to a, add- With the highest, Mr. Chagintetto, yeah. with the highest level of price, than before. Yeah. So, uh, I think... Richard, uh, can, can I say something here? Sure. I'm, in the I'm mind, sure there's a, I'm in the sure there's a perspective to, to contribute. Thank you. Yeah, Go ahead. I'm in the mining sector and um, uh, I work in the mining sector, and I, I, I probably need to say something uh, here. Um, the 2018 mining code uh, was adopted by parliament with the intent to improve uh, the collection of taxes and to make things in such a way that uh, the country will benefit from its mining sector. This explains why the royalties went from 2% to 3.5% as far as copper is concerned. And then it went from 2% um, uh, to 10% uh, as far as cobalt, because cobalt is not considered as a, a strategic metal. Uh, so uh, the mining sector will contribute um, based on the laws of our own country. So if we say that you have to contribute 30% of your, your profits uh, as taxes, the mining sector will pay those 32, 30% uh, towards the taxes of the country. Now take, let me give you a, a very simple example. It's one of uh, Tenge Fungurume mining. Uh, in 2019, for example, Thank you for Murume Mining contributed $414 million to the state budget. That represents approximately 10% of the national budget. $414 million that was contributed by Thank you for Murume. To that, you add in, 2000, in 2019, 32 million that were paid to Jekamin. Jekamin being the state company because the, 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 the state is the sole uh, shareholder in Jekamin. So they paid $32 million to Jekamin. And in addition to that, Jekamin received approximately $15 million in consultancy but Jekamin doesn't do any consultancy uh, to, to, to Tenke. 
So uh, for the year 2019 alone, the contribution was approximately $461 million that was contributed by this one company. And I can extrapolate that to KCC, to Mumi, to, to Kibali. Uh, of course, uh, we also have to look at what it costs to produce the minerals that we were talking about. Uh, we're not a coastal country. We don't have a, a, a coast in the southern part of the country. And the cost of production in our country is extremely high. And uh, if you look at the, the, the cost of uh, uh, producing copper, it's approximately 50, uh, 50 to 54%. Uh, this is uh, OPEX, operation expenditures, around 50 to 54%. So the remaining 50 or 46% is what companies use to pay the 30% taxes. That's what they use to pay the dividends to the, the, the government or to the partners. And so uh, it's, it's very difficult to say, yes, they don't pay enough. Yes, they don't pay enough simply because our own laws tell them to pay what they are paying now. And if we ask them to pay more, Mr. Mwamba, Mr. Mwamba, we, we will not uh, uh, make debates about that because if you open your OPEX, uh, you will see more uh, transfer pricing coming I from agree. the. the, the I agree the, with you. Yes, the headquarters uh, who explain the the, the 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 negative profit. I can say because. Uh, there, 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 there are almost no profit in, uh, in, in this sector, and we understand why. It's not my point. It's not my point. No, my point I agree is, with you. I agree with my you point, that. My point, uh, my point just is. Just hold on. Just hold on. Yes. I would say this. I definitely exactly. agree with you that. Let's let in Ambassador the Kabanga finish, please. And then we'll go to uh, Andre Wameso. Thank you. Yeah, uh, what I would I, I definitely agree with you that when you you look at the OPEX, uh, this is an area where the country has to to be extremely vigilant and make sure that the prices that are given for the production are real, and uh, that's a very fuzzy area where we have to investigate and what we have to be very transparent. For that one, I, I, I give you the credit and uh, I agree with you 100%. But the area where I'm saying that we have to do, we have to be careful is what they are paying in terms of taxes is a reflection of the laws that we have in our books. So let's focus on the OPEX and try to squeeze as much as we can because they are there, there is fraud in that area. I agree with you, definitely. Yes, but uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Katanga, Mr. Mwamba, uh, what you say, we can solve it very easily, you know? If Tenke uh, Fungurume or Glencore or at the level of the headquarters, we have no problem anymore. No problem anymore. And uh, this model uh, not doesn't come from uh, 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 March or Venus. It's in, in Africa. When you go to Botswana, the problem was fixed. There is no problem of transfer pricing because Anglo-American and the country, the government of the Botswana are both owner of the beers and the sector, uh, the diamond sector in Botswana, is uh, contributed to the to the not to the budget, not to the budget, but to the GDP of the country more than thirty percent. We need. It's what I I I, 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 I said uh, just before. We have our problem. We need to fix it regarding good governance and uh, and uh, a fight against corruption. And uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm glad uh, I will be happy uh, if the, 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 the country 
again with IMF because uh, uh, this uh, new deal between our country with uh, IMF would strengthen uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the framework of uh, good governance. But the, 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 the key problem regarding our mining sector is not in Congo. As I say, it's in Wall Street, it's uh, at London Stock Exchange, Euronext, because there, the company like Glencore, um, even they, they, they have Glencore or other company, Barrick and, uh, and, and so on, Ivano, even despite all the, the, their problem here, they, we, we can see that with the, 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 the boom of uh, the, the mining sector, the share of those companies also increase. But it's not at the same level with the G GDP per capita of Congolese people. That's uh, 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 my, my point. And that's what we, we, we need to, to solve together with those companies, together with the financial sector. Because I cannot understand uh, 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 um, if we have 25% of Cassisi and Glencore have 75% uh, of Cassisi, the 75% of Cassisi represents billion of dollars uh, in, uh, in, in stock exchange uh, uh, everywhere in the world. But the 25% of the country of DRC represents zero. I want uh, all the specialists, all financial specialists to explain me that discrepancy. It's a key problem and a huge problem and we need also to, uh, to, to, to solve it and to fix it for the benefit of uh, Congolese people. Thank you.